Hi, Mal. Thanks for joining on the call today. Cool, cool, cool. How are you? I'm good. I'm tired, but good. But good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Things are moving nicely. Um, and I'm super excited that we are doing our first in-person workshop. I can't believe that it's finally happening after, you know, being all locked down and stuff. Um, Skills Exchange gets to add a new experience to what we're trying to achieve. And I'm so excited that you have offered to host this workshop. Um, I thought that we could just do a quick catch up and tell the members all about what to expect next Saturday, the 14th of November. Yeah, cool. So um, the workshop is called How to Uncover Your Gift and uh, Get Fired Up About Your Purpose. I think it's a topic that resonates with a lot of people. Um, everybody's trying to figure out, you know, why am I here? What am I meant to do? Do I have a gift? How am I supposed to figure out what it is? What if I like more than one thing? Like, there's so many options now with social media and the internet and um you know, like social media platforms have made so many things possible that weren't possible before in terms of creating your own career. Mm -hmm. And um, I think besides some women feeling like, do I even have a gift? Which the answer is yes, of course you do. Um, the other one is there's so many options. Like, like how do I choose? I have so many interests. So I think this is, a, is going to be a great workshop to just kind of narrow down um, to that one specific thing that you should be doing, you know, that you're going to feel good doing, that you that's going to energize you, that's going to bring the most value to the target audience that your experiences have molded you um, to service. I'm very excited. When we initially spoke about you um, hosting a workshop for Skills Exchange, there's something in particular that really stuck with me. Um, and it was, you know, when you're in high school, you get trained to be an employee rather than yeah. an entrepreneur or a freelancer consultant kind of thing. Can you just like explain a little bit how this all kind of ties in? So I feel like um, the whole school system kind of trains uh, you to be one type of person. Mm -hmm. um, they kind of only one type of intelligence. And I feel like a lot of people come out of high school kind of disheartened and disillusioned because they weren't great at that specific type of intelligence which is more academic like memorizing certain things and to some degree certain subjects like maybe science and maths um, like analytical thinking and problem solving um, but there's a lot that not taught at high school and, and I feel like it's becoming a kind of like a global conversation about what high school didn't prepare you for and what people wish they had learned in high school um, I mean even simple things like financial planning and things like that but um, yeah, I don't feel like um, high school really taught me how to take risks, firstly, um, and to kind of think for myself, you know, what kind of career do I want to create? It's all about setting you up to go to university. And I feel like universities and colleges at some point is kind of going to become um, obsolete because there's so much information that's available online. Mm -hmm. um, you can literally become anything you want. I mean, there's like teenagers starting businesses. This is more of a phenomenon in um, America, but yeah, as well. I mean, you can start your own thing. You can do your own thing. You can become a, a social media, media personality influencer in whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so, yeah, I feel like high school, I mean... <laughs> Have you, did you learn anything at high school that kind of, that you feel prepared you for what you're doing now? No, not at all. <laughs> I think like after high school, I didn't even know what I wanted to study. And then I remember sitting in the reception at Varsity College, reading the pamphlet and going, okay, maybe accounting, maybe sports management, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. I went into PR and then like, I didn't even know if that was something that I wanted to pursue. So yeah, I don't think high school prepares us for what's coming next, but also it doesn't give you that opportunity to like discover what you, who you are and what your passion is and what your gift is. Um, exactly. I think like the internet, there's just so many options when you're that young and self-awareness is another thing, you know, that comes with maturity. 
so that's why I connected um, so well to this topic specifically. Um, and then obviously ha having witnessed your journey um, in the description for the event, we, you, we've included that, you know, um, no writing qualifications, no prior experience, but you found your gift and your desire. So um, tell us more about your experience. Okay, so um, like we were saying, high school didn't really prepare me for what was to come. Um, neither did college really because, um, so let me just tell you a little, like a funny story about how I decided what I wanted to study. In grade nine, I watched a, a movie called um, What Women Want. Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Where you can read everyone's thoughts. And I don't know if you remember in the movie, um, him and Helen Hunt were both art directors. And just watching the way that they worked and their lifestyle and um, there was a Nike ad that they pitched at the end of the movie and it was so moving and I was like, oh, I want to I wanna um, spend my life coming up with ideas and just like giving it to the designers to go and do like literally they came up with ideas and that's what they got paid for. I'm like, this is, this is amazing. <laughs> so that's what I decided to study based on a movie and one other person I knew that did it. And I literally, from grade nine to matric, I stuck with it. And that's what I went to go and study. It's the only place I, I applied to one tertiary institu institution and I went. And um, my final year, long story short, final year, I decided, um, actually, I don't want to do advertising. I don't feel like that's where my heart is. Um, there was just a disconnect. And I spent the, the, the next couple of years trying to figure out what it is that I wanted to do and there was a lot of confusion about it which I feel like um, maybe some other people have experienced where you can kind of get very hard on yourself when you don't find thing that you want to do immediately um, like I felt uh, there was a lot of negative thoughts that I had to battle um, I was you know very critical of self I thought maybe I was just being lazy like maybe I just didn't want to work hard um, but when you find the thing that you want to do uh, the work doesn't feel hard mm. it's enjoyable mm. and that's the, the one distinguishing um, thing that when you do find your your gift and how you're supposed to apply it you'll feel that immediately the work doesn't feel like work mm. um, so I bounced around a little bit took a bit of a gap year went back to the bookstore that I used to work at did a lot of reading a lot of introspection self-discovery um, I tried out sales I became a financial advisor and eventually I left being a financial advisor because, oh, and that was one of the other things that came up, uh, one of the other um, kind of lies that I told myself in my head. Um, when I decided not to go into advertising, one of the other things besides am I just lazy was am I maybe not a creative person? Like, am I not supposed to be creative, you know? Yeah, so there was, there was a lot of those um, doubts mm. and... Um, when I was a financial advisor, I was like, no, I'm definitely not a salesperson. Mm. Um, it's good to know yourself, like you mentioned earlier, self-awareness. I am not energized by seeing people all the time. And the reason I knew this was because I worked with people who were, like they were born salespeople. And it doesn't matter that I was good at it because I was really good at it. I was winning awards. Things were telling me that I could make something of myself in this career, but I wasn't energized by it. I was drained, you know? And I couldn't see myself spending another year um, in this job. So I decided, you know what, take a break. I'm going to try and figure out what it is I want to do because there's a very strong part of me that needs uh, to put out something creative, you know. Um, so took a bit of a, uh, another break. I quit that job. I had, a, I had some savings. Uh, as luck would have it, I uh, fell pregnant with my second child. So that put a spanner in the works. Um, I initially, but but you know what? It was also a lot of positive pressure because mm -hmm. a lot of people can see things that happen, uh, circumstances changing, maybe that you weren't aware of and think, oh, you know, like this is the end of the road for me. But I feel like having my second child um, was positive pressure because now the, the clock was ticking, you know what I mean? In a couple of months, it was going to be a new responsibility. So I had to use this time, um, you know, as well as possible. So I decided to just explore the first thing that I felt attracted to, and that was fashion. 
Mm. And I remember following uh, Just Jade on Instagram because um, I knew her personally and seeing her blog like explode and like her following and, you know, she was just blowing up. And I was like, you know what, that looks so cool. And the mistake I made was I was looking at her success from the outside in. And that's also another mistake that we, we make is that we see somebody else's success and them enjoying what they are meant to do. Mm-hmm. And it looks so attractive to us because we don't have it that we decide, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be that person. But yeah. you can't be that person because there's only one of that person. You need to be what you're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So I did that and it took me a sewing course um, a 12 weeks in course to figure out like there's no way I can go into fashion firstly I hate sewing secondly I can hardly even dress myself in the morning like I'm the type of person that buys one piece of, pair of tackies and wears it the whole year like how am I going to be an influencer the thought of coming up with outfit ideas like that was hard work to me yeah. and that was also a, a signal this is not for me mm-hmm. so it was very kind of humiliating to go back to my support system and say, you know what, actually I made another mistake. I'm going to make another career change because now, you know, it's been advertising, uh, financial advisor, fashion, potential fashion mogul. And now it's like, wait, um, no, no, no. I changed my mind again. You know, this is a short space of time. So I, there was a lot of hesitation going to my mom and being like, listen, um, I've decided not to do this fashion thing, but the cool thing about that old journey was I was blogging my experience going from corporate to um, creative mm-hmm. with a blog that I called um, melissathecreative.com and I still use the name like it's my email address and it's my uh, handle on, on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Mel the Creative. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happened was somebody commented on my writing ability on one of my blog posts um, and I was like, Hey, wait a minute like I, I thought everyone could write you know what I mean I didn't see my writing ability as anything above and beyond what somebody else could do mm. um so when somebody told me that I write really well I was like hey wait maybe I should try this writing thing because it's something that um I was interested in at a younger age um and I did get complimented on and I, I got good feedback from teachers and, uh, you know, like parents and aunts and whatever. Um, but I didn't, because it's something that's so inherently in who I am. Like I, I write every day, still to this day. I'm a diary keeper. I'm a journal keeper. I'm an obsessive note taker. Like I will write like all day, every day. That's just where really, I'm happy. It doesn't feel like work. So obviously I didn't value it mm. because it's just, something I'm used to Mm. Um, and also I'm an avid avid reader I love reading I consume information Um, so I decided to pursue it and what ended up happening was my career just unfolded in the most like it was just unreal how quickly and how smooth the process was once I latched on this thing I did a short course while I was pregnant I literally submitted my last assignment in the hospital like (laughs) when we go after me goes born <laughs> like that's how tight, how tight this was um and then I just decided to start uh, applying for jobs with no writing experience no portfolio mm. no qualification besides a short course I did through get smarter mm. um and um there were a couple of no's because of the experience but one company decided you know what um we don't think it's about the qualifications. Uh, it's more about the passion for us. And they decided to try me out as a freelancer. Mm-hmm. And the thing about being like not having ex- like experience or qualification, it means you try harder yeah. because you feel like you're the underdog. You know, you're not as good as everyone else. So you put in more work. So mm-hmm. my research was like on another level. I put in so much work because of that. Um, you know, feeling like I have a weakness because I, I, I don't have but, uh, don't have a qualification. But what ended up happening was I stood out from everybody else mm. because of the amount of work that I was putting into what I was producing. Mm. And what ended up happening with that first job was the publisher of the company um, saw one of my articles that I had submitted as a freelancer and he called me in, he wanted to meet me. Um, 
And I was like, okay, cool, what is this about? But I was like, you know what, don't get your hopes up because at this point I've probably been for like three interviews and I didn't get the job because I wasn't experienced enough. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm just going to go and meet him. It's probably like a formal thing. He just wants to say hi. And I go in and he told me, uh, because they'd hired somebody else, obviously, already. Mm -hmm. And he told me, you know what, Um, I've read your work like, it's amazing, like all these compliments. I was like oh. sitting there, like <laughs> I went through like down in my seat. It was so like it was good, but it was embarrassing. I was just blushing and I wasn't used to that kind of positive hmm. um like feedback on the spot. Yeah. And he said, like, you know what? We will make we will make a place at this company for you. Oh, wow. Like we will find her and that was my first writing job. And I mean, like you can see in the bio, it's just been uh, and a progression from the mm. yeah fantastic amazing and I think more women will be inspired by your story I think a lot of the time we do doubt ourselves and that's because we haven't tried and like I think that's what high school kind of gives you um is all these options to try but then once you leave high school you don't kind of make these opportunities happen for yourself where you can try and fail but fail forward so that you understand a little bit more about yourself and make more um, conscious decisions and yeah and I'm looking forward to the workshop and I know that I'll be logging in from zoom and everybody else hopefully face to face and then obviously some people will zoom as well in preparation for the workshop what do our members have to do so there's one exercise, and this is something I did a couple of years ago, and I found it to be incredibly powerful. Um, this is after I'd already decided to be a writer, but just in terms of narrowing down where I wanted my creative focus to be, I found this exercise to be so powerful. Um, so the exercise is called Call Your Mother. And basically, you need to contact somebody who knew you very well as a child. Um, and you need to kind of um, do a deep dive and discover five things about you as a child so this is before um you kind of became self-aware not in the positive sense in the more negative sense um you know as children you just you are who you are you know you're not trying to be anything for anybody else you enjoy what you enjoy there's no um oh this is in right now so i'll do this like mm. you're a kid you just you just are you um so that's why i would like you to find out who you were when you were a child because that's when you were most honestly yourself mm. um so call your mother your father your grandma whoever knew you well like really well who spent time with you on a day-to-day -day basis and just ask them like you know what did you enjoy doing as a child uh what were your defining characteristics what did you not enjoy doing which toys and games did you love to play with um you know just just five things and don't be discouraged if some of the things that you hear is negative like I called my mom um and I mean we we knocked it we were both very uh we had strong personalities and they sometimes clash um <laughs> so <laughs> it was a very interesting call but one of the things she said was I was very bossy and that can sound like you know a bit negative but as children, some of our strong and, um, you know, our most prominent traits that might annoy our parents turn out to be like our best qualities as adults. Mm. So a bossy toddler can turn into uh, somebody with good leadership abilities. Um, so don't, don't kind of hide away the negative, uh, <laughs> the negative um, feedback that you get whatever feels true to you like if somebody says something you like it's to put it in mm. because this is who you are at your core and we need to if you're going to be happy doing what you're doing if you're going to be energized by the work um that you choose to do with your gift you need to be completely honest with yourself and um yeah just, sorry I'm not going to just pass me some stuff um i think it's been done thank you um what was I saying? Yeah, you need to be honest with yourself because you're not going to be happy and energized doing the work that's made for somebody else. Mm. So come as you are in all your childish goodness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, let's work with, with, with what you got, you know? You got yeah. some magic in you. 
I think all of us do and we just undermine ourselves sometimes we just need that boost of confidence and if that's tapping into your passion finding your gift and exploring it then that's way and what you should be doing um but yeah come to the workshop that melissa is hosting next saturday the 14th of november at workshop 17 or you can tune in from zoom the comfort of your home <laughs> and um, yeah looking forward to seeing you guys there any last thoughts melissa <laughs> Um, I'm just looking so forward to meeting everyone. I am so excited to be able to help anybody um, try and figure out what the what the gift is. Like this is the most exciting part of your journey, and I just feel so blessed to be included. And thank you so much, Stacey, for letting me do this. No, I'm excited. Yay! Thank you. Okay. Um, so RSVP by clicking the link in the description below the text that you'll be getting now <laughs> see you guys bye thanks melissa bye <laughs>